the video that was shown, I've seen several times, and it was always difficult for me to watch, even thinking about it, it chokes me up. At TMG, we are definitely family. I know that we are. Because we are really family, we love like family. Um, we are definitely family. And a couple of years back, we lost one of our family members, Mr. Brady Hill, Mr. Real Hill Brady Hill. And I have to say Brady was family to this organization because Brady wrapped his arms around every last one of us who was here. He didn't care where you were from. He didn't care what your production numbers were. He just wanted to love you and eat with you. <laughs> that was our friend. He was our brother. And he took care of his agency. He did whatever he had to do to help us out. Brady had a call every morning at 630, seven days a week, even when he was sick. He put this call together for motivational talks. And anybody can give on across the country. He let it play. Because he loved us. He gave us everything he could. He did. And when we lost our friend, I made a point that he was going to live on with us forever. Because he's that damn good. So we put together a Brady Hill Award. Someone who goes out there and gives to this wonderful agency. And it's so many of you guys that would have qualified for this award. So many of you. But there's one person I felt that deserved the award this year. This individual has changed our business completely. He truly, and he's turned it upside down. This individual took a chance on himself. This individual said, you know what, Troy, I'm leaving Pittsburgh and I'm moving to Philadelphia, whether you like it or not. I'm getting out of here. I'm a young kid with no children, but I believe in myself and this business, and I know that there's a side of that state that needs my help, needs TMG's help, and I'm going to go develop some people on that side of the state. And I'm going to turn it upside down for us. You don't pay for this one, huh? Every, so many things that we do today is because of this young man. For him to run into a closet while he was at kinder care to make a call to Brian to say, Job. It, it, you, guys, so you guys have done that, sending your resume from your from the job you're currently at. Use their fax machine to send in, well, I said fax machine, well, that's not going to You would send in your resume to another job using their stuff. Well, this guy was in, hit, hiding in a closet or hiding, making a phone call to Brian to set up an interview to say, hey, I want to take a look at this thing. And when this young man came aboard, he changed the game for this guy, this guy was serious. He made us step our game up. And he's given so much to this business, to this agency. This year's recipient of the Real Deal Brady Hill Award, Mr. Dan Stein. <laughs>
Brady, he would grab the bull by the horns. We didn't have to ask him twice. He just did it. That is a bull. This guy, we never had to ask twice. He got it done even before we was finished, even before we could even finish the request. This guy was getting it done. Um, I would like to thank the Hill family for coming today. Thank you so much for joining us and helping us keep your husband, your father's memory alive. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you and everything and letting us call Brady for that amount of time. We, we, we thank you for that. Man, I know I got you good. I know I did. You, had, you put so much into that little thank you speech. It was so cute. But now you gotta hear about something else. You know, <laughs> you're always prepared. Here you go. Wow. Um, thank you. I, I feel like I feel like Kristen up here right now. Check Dropbox. Totally not ready. How'd you do that, Troy? Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I got a, I got a speech in Dropbox. Let me pull that out real quick. <laughs> so, guys, what? I mean, this means a lot. I mean, Brady was everybody's friend, everybody's agent. He was. You, you wouldn't know whose team he was on because everybody was on the same team. You know, for Brady. And, and, and honestly, you know, what, what Choice has created is a culture, you know, it's in a vision. And, you know, I was at a place where I didn't know really what, where I wanted to go in life. I was looking at jobs and like to be a, like a medical assistant. You know, like, I just know I didn't want to, I knew what I didn't want. And that was enough. I just, I wanted to go somewhere. But I didn't have the vehicle to take me there. And what Troy created in all of us collectively is the vehicle to keep going and to keep going. And this doesn't stop. It never does. I'll never forget one week, I'm like a year or two into business, I cleared $8,000 in a week. I'm like, holy crap. Like, this keeps going. Like, you can't stop pay through from coming in. You just gotta go to work. And I know, oh, I hear you guys saying that all the time, just go to work, just go to work. But it, you, you gotta want it, right? You gotta know what you don't want in this business. You know, you all came from somewhere and you're all here right now. So do something about it. Take it seriously. Treat this as if it's your own child. It's your baby. Nurture it. Raise it right. And when it when you put in that time and that effort and that energy, it's gonna live, you're gonna be living a very fruitful life. And, and Brady definitely did. You know, every day he brought so much joy into people's lives. He would embrace people and you know, like who is this guy? But make him feel so good and so welcome. And you know, that's that's what we're doing here, guys. So, you know, I, well, coming in, I always just treated this as a team. I was always active in sports as a kid, doing anything. And, you know, you, we gotta help our, our fellow agent. You know, we're, we're only as strong as our weakest link here. So when we all just, the key is this, guys. Here's, you wanna know the secret? Just help one person a day. That's it. You know, when you see an opportunity, don't think about it. Just go do it and figure it out later. It's going to work out. I promise you. I didn't know the first. I'm going to tell a quick story. Some of you guys heard this a million times, but I my first I'm six months in the business and I'm considered a veteran. I Dan, he's our veteran, right? Go on the field with Dan. We'll show you how to work the business. But I'm still calling and asking for questions. So I went, I had 15 appointments lined up. I 
I said, wow, I never had this many appointments lined up in a week in my life. I've got to switch arms. It is heavy. So I had 15 appointments lined up. I said, oh, I'm going to kill it. And then I sold five in one house. I'm like, ooh, it's off. Here we go. Here we go. And every house after that was a cancellation, a reschedule, get off my porch. I'm not interested. No show, no show, no show, no show. I was like, okay, we got a rule. And the rule was never go more than two days without making a sale. That was the rule. I said, okay, well, it's two days. And I didn't count the weekend either. And so day three came by. My stubborn self is like, no, I can do this. I don't need help. I can figure this out on my own. But why figure how to figure out when you got the cheat codes? It was right over here, Brian, Brian and Troy. So I called him, I said, Troy, what am I doing wrong? He goes, well, explain to me, break down to me what you're doing. So I did. He's like, okay, what's your schedule look like? I broke it down. What do you say when a client says this? Broke down all their objections, rebuttals, you name it. He goes, man, just keep doing what you're doing. And I looked at him, and I wanted to say so many things, but I bit my tongue. Because I'm like, that is the worst. I'm thinking in my head, that's the worst advice I ever got. Because what I'm doing ain't working. So why would I keep doing what ain't working? And well, I was like, you know, this guy knows more than me. He's, he's done this. He's never gave me any bad advice up until this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So I did. And that next week, I got real uncomfortable. I went out to Philadelphia. For the first time ever, I didn't know anything about Philly. Nothing. I had some friends that lived in Philly, and they're like, yeah, just be careful, it's a little dangerous. And I was like, some neighborhoods are good, but some are bad. I was like, well, here's where I'm going. And they go, oh yeah, those are all the bad ones. <laughs> so I was like, damn. I told my mom, I was like, mom, I'm gonna be out of town for a few days. She was, where are you going, Philly? Oh, Philly's bad. Don't go to Philly, because my friend told me people get right shot there all the time and this and that. I was like, okay, all right, whatever, I'll be all right. I, I, you know, I've gone to the hood in Pittsburgh, and it's, it's not that bad. So, so I, uh, I got so nervous because I kept hearing from other people how bad Philly was. But mind you, I'm already like in the car. We're calling leads that have been on the shelf, not old leads, no such thing, on the shelf for one year, sitting. I got 30, never got 30 before. 30 leads, called through them, killing it, and still on appointments up left and right because it's, it was exciting and new. So I'm like, I've never been here, I'm excited to talk to these people, I've never talked to people from Philly before. So I went out and, um, Mind you, before, before I went out, Troy says to me, he says, Dan, look, your luck's going to change. Keep doing what you're doing. Your luck's going to change. And when it does, we're going to laugh about this. So I said, okay, sure, whatever, Troy. I go, I go out to Philly, and my roommate um, also is an agent. And I was like so nervous about going because I kept hearing like I thought I was gonna be like dodging bullets, you know, uh, in Philly. I'm like, uh, I, I don't have any life insurance. I should probably get some before I get to the field today. <laughs> and so I did. And that was that agent's only sale for the week. And so he goes to me, he's like, why don't you get a 20 pay? Because I'm 24 at the time. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. It's like 50 bucks a month, that's a little expensive. He goes, we'll just pay for the whole year. It's only $600. I was like, oh, that's like only like one application. Do I pay? Yeah, I'll do that. Here's my credit card. So I actually got life insurance before I went out in the field and it gave me some actual, I'm not lying, it gave me a lot of comfort and peace of mind knowing that, God forbid something did happen to me on this trip. But my mom, my brother, my dad's gonna be okay and they're gonna be able to have enough money to do what they need to do. So I went. And a week later, I called Troy. I said, hey, Troy, you ready? He goes, for what? He's like, you ready to laugh? He goes, why? 
was like, I just sold 18 policies this week. I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I didn't even get to all the leads. The houses were so close together. I was just talking to the neighbors half the time. Out, out on the street, that's what they call me, the, the, my nickname now, since because of that, I was Street King. So I was just going out talking to the neighbors, and I had to go back because uh, we have a commitment and obligation to our leads. We gotta keep going until we get until they say, "Don't ever come here again." If they say, "I'm not interested," that's a soft no. That's not a real no. You go back. So I went back because I couldn't get to everybody, and then. I got referrals, and then I made other connections. One gentleman, Tyrone, my guy, we still talk to this day, and uh, invited me to come to a, um, a community event in Strawberry Mansion. And we brought the whole team. We brought the whole team. Not just my agents, the whole team came. There was like 30, 40 of us right policies on the bleachers in the park. It was awesome. And on one day I realized that financially I'm living two lives here because of all the gas money tolls and food and hotels and everything. And so I said, you know what? I'm just gonna go to Philly. Troy, I'm leaving. He goes, no, it's too soon. So then like, I said, okay. Three months later, I said, no, I'm, I'm leaving this time for real. And then I looked at rent. And I realized that rent was like fifteen hundred or three thousand dollars out there. I was like, dang, I feel like eight hundred, and I thought it was expensive in Pittsburgh. So I was like, that's a mortgage. Wait, why don't I just go buy a house? So I did. I don't have any family there. I do now, but I didn't then. And I started dating my wife at that time, or close close to it. And um, we did long distance from Pittsburgh to Philly. Um, Pittsburgh did Long Island, New York, so even further from New York. We did that for a whole year, and I was like, damn, this is like the most expensive relationship ever. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm just gonna go buy a house in a, in a market that hasn't been touched. And I can also be closer to my future wife too at the same time. So when you want something, guys, and girls, ladies and gentlemen, just go out and just go do it. You have the tools to do it. You have the coaching, you have the mentorship, you have the leadership, you have the platform. You have a business in a box. All you gotta do is just read the instructions and put it together and you're gonna get the results. Thank you, Troy, for everything. Thank you, Brady. Thank you, family, thank you, team. Thank you, Maria. Love you guys.